with the technology being as powerful and available and relatively inexpensive as it is today, you can build almost anything you want to build, you know, other than my two sort of favorite products, the instant weight loss pill and the time travel machine, both of which I'm eager to be the, uh, you know, first customer of. But the real problem for startups today is getting customers. It's not getting investors, because if you're not getting customers, you won't get investors. It's finding a fit between your product and your customers that is repeatable, that's scalable, and that not necessarily today, but over time can lead you to a profitable, sort of sustainable business. And Steve Blank has a sort of interesting um, CV of his own for those of you who aren't aware of him. Um, Steve was involved in eight startups, four as an employee and four as a co-founder, and the last two as CEO. And Steve has two Silicon Valley records that are particularly, I think, relevant to a talk like this tonight. The first Silicon Valley record he set was with his seventh startup, Rocket Science Games. It was back in the days when uh, computer games came in cartridges and were only sold in retail stores and cost about $40 and so forth. Uh, Rocket Science Games assembled an all-star team of developers, designers, engineers, marketing people, salespeople, finance, and $38 million of venture capital. And Rocket Science set the all-time Silicon Valley speed record for the amount of time it took from appearing on the cover of Wired magazine, announcing this, this was, I think the uh, headline was, the future of video gaming is here today. $38 million power for, you know, rocket science, et cetera, et cetera. They set a speed record for the, going from the cover of that magazine to closing down the business for lack of customers and delivered most of their game cartridges not to consumers, but to dumps where they were like plowed under in landfills all over the United States. So what could they possibly have done wrong? Well, fundamentally, all those you know, VIP executives on the rocket science team, not one of them was a gamer. So they had no customer pulse inside the company. And probably more than any other experience, the experience with rocket science led Steve to write his first book back in 2003, The Four Steps to the Epiphany, which basically outlined the concepts Bruno was talking about and that I'm gonna talk about momentarily. And then 10 years later, he and I, show, or eight years later, shook hands and set to work on, okay, we've got the concepts, how do we actually do it? And how we actually do it is really the heart of the, um, Startup Owner's Manual. And there's one more Steve Blank story and then we'll move on. And that is, after losing $38 million, one of the investors who had lost quite a few of those millions, put her arms around Steve, you know, walking out of the room where they, they're having a meeting to figure out how could so many smart people lose so much money so quickly? And they figured out it was really the lack of customer input. This woman, Catherine Gould, puts her arm around Steve and says, well, Steve, what are you going to do next? And he said, well, I know what I'm going to do next. I'm going to go home. I'm going to go into the garage. I'm going to grab a shovel. I'm going to dig a hole about six feet long, about five feet deep, about 24 inches wide. I'm going to climb in, and I'm going to have my wife come out and cover me over. I figure I'm pretty well dead in Silicon Valley. I'll never raise another dime, and I'm a total failure. And she said, no, no, Steve, you don't understand how it works out here. Um, I meant, what startup are you going to do next? Because I have to make my $6 million back. <laughs> and the, probably the fundamental difference between Silicon Valley and the entire rest of the startup universe is that in Silicon Valley, they have one word, definition of a failed entrepreneur, and that definition is experienced. 
the idea that you learn from your failures and you process that learning and you apply it the next time is one of the most difficult things for entrepreneurs to understand in most of the rest of the world. Startups fail because on day one, the highly self-confident, come on in, <coughs> highly self-confident entrepreneur says, I know what my customers' problems are, and I know exactly what features and functions are required to fix those problems or solve those problems. And that leads the typical entrepreneur into a very sort of rigorous, inflexible, traditional, old way of building a product. Start with some seed funding, go and lock yourself in a lead-lined room and code or develop the product for three, six, eight months leading up to an alpha <coughs> test, a beta test, and then all sort of time to coincide with first customer ship. There's two problems with that. Number one, it allows no flexibility for change. And number two, it assumes that over here on a day when by definition as a startup on day one, come on in, you have no customers, you know who your customers are, what their problems are, and what product you can build to solve those problems. So it's sort of fundamentally uh, ridiculous.